Astrogoth. No, he's not a space-faring metalhead, he's a mecha-wearing, magic-wielding, limb-petrified high priest of Hushut, and he's on a mission to prove his best sorcering days aren't yet behind him. Chaos Dwarfs, what a lovely pair of words. You'll be pleased to know our angry little Chaos friends have a nice variety of ranged, melee, cavalry, and artillery units, as well as enough cannon fodder to make the greenest of Skaven salivate. Orc and Goblin laborers offer an inexpensive front line that can be used to distract your enemy's army and control the flow of the battlefield. We'll use them in our approach to soak up arrows and conceal the units we actually care about. Meanwhile, Astrogoth and our centaur boys are going to loop around the back and harass their archers. Yep, you heard that right. Astrogoth's legs are as swift as they are. Utterly terrifying. We've sent our blunderbusses to flank the bulk of the orcs and the result is a similar consistency to mushy peas. All that's left now is for Iron Hand to do his thing. Despite putting some green skins in their place, Astrogoth is a far cry from his former glory. A fact he'll need to overcome as he consolidates the orc infested province of Zorn as full to reclaim his rightful place in the Tower of Zard. But proving he's the one true leader of the Conclave isn't Old Iron Hand's only goal. Oh no. A way into the domain of Hushat has shown itself, and, once breached, the Chaos Dwarfs can reap the most potent power known to demon Dawi kind the blood of her shut. To get there, Astrogoth will need to build a drill. A very, very big drill. Which we can upgrade into level 2 and level 4 at the cost of a hefty sum of raw materials. Which means we'll need a strong economy. We'll return to the great drill of Hushat in a little bit, but for now, what better way to amass great wealth than with great violence? We're weakened, we're outnumbered, and we're on the offensive. Thankfully, the lore of Hushat with its many fiery boons comes in clutch. Burning Wrath is our bread and butter in Astrogoth's early campaign. Good damage, good range, good vibes. Who doesn't like swirling death lava? Ah, to the victor go the spoils. Another hard-won piece of the puzzle. Unlike every other faction in the world, Chaos Dwarfs know the value of hard work, the worth of a sweaty brow and calloused palms. That's why Chaos Dwarfs don't build any old settlements, no no. They build outposts, factories and towers, all tools of the unrelenting machine of industry. Outposts are needed to mine raw materials, factories turn those raw materials into armaments and gold, and towers are our sprawling province capitals. But what do we build? Well, there's a lot of factors to take into consideration, and before we get there, let's rewind a little bit and take a deeper look at our economy. That's right, hold on to your seatbelt, I said economy. Chaos Dwarfs are industrious little fellas, and that's reflected in the way we'll manage our budding empire's resources. Behold, our new major currencies. Treasury, raw materials, armaments, and labor. And then there's Conclave influence, but we'll come back to that later. Treasury needs no explanation, it's shiny, it's heavy, we love it. Raw materials does what it says on the tin, needed for certain buildings and technologies and can be converted into armaments or gold in specific factory buildings. Our primary source of raw materials is from outpost strip mines, but we can also trade with it using military convoys, which unlock at turn 5. Armaments, primarily gained through factory assembly lines, armaments are used in the construction of advanced military buildings and some technologies. As with raw materials, we can trade armaments on military convoy expeditions for other goods. Labour, because all those tasty, tasty minerals aren't going to mine themselves. Labour directly affects the output of our raw materials. More strip mines requires more labour, and a dwindling workforce produces fewer raw materials. So keeping your control in check is advised. We can perform various actions with our labour force, increasing our gold stores or our conclave influence, or we can move labour around our sprawling empire to bolster provinces that might need the extra manpower. You may have guessed it, labourers are largely unpaid, gained from willing battles, and are usually greenskins. So, what to build? 
We've established that labor is important and its effectiveness is directly linked to a province's control. We need labor to mine raw materials and those raw materials to produce armaments and other goods. I've got an idea and feel free to disagree with me, that's fine, but I envision a Chaos Dwarf Empire with districts. Here, in my homeland, I see the heart of my mining endeavors, free outposts and keeping all those laborers in line, a tall, terrible tower. Yeah, let's do that. Our next province will be entirely factories, and that'll be our industrial district. Factories are too important to sleep on though, so we'll build a mixture for now and utilize the swap settlement feature when it's district time. One of the handiest uses for labor is instant construction. For example, we can kickstart our economy by throwing laborers at it, instantly building a money pit to get those coffers flowing. Over in the tower, we'll want to work towards upgrading to rank two at the hefty cost of raw materials. An upgraded tower will give us access to the lava fields, where we can churn out more centaurs and the great Taurus, amongst other handy benefits. More ranks eventually leads to the Lanasu, Bull Center Renders, and the dreaded Bell Taurus, but that'll take time and some serious resources. Before we move on, it's a good idea to get some technology brewing. For Chaos Dwarfs, the technology tree is split into three branches, military, sorcery, and industry. No points for guessing which one does what, although our sorcery tree is also where we'll find our diplomatic boons. No wrong answers here, we can cater our society to fit very specific moulds. Military, powerhouse or economic marvel, the choice is ours. And we're going to choose a nice mixed spread. We'll start with Merchant's Guild for the bonus to trade and then we'll work towards Envoys of the Conclave in the Sorcery Tree which will get us on good standing with our fellow Chaos Dwarfs. It'll be a while until we need to worry about unlocking technologies with specific resources so let's just push that out of our heads for now. And whilst we're pushing that out of our heads, let's push some new skills into Astrogoths. Group Marcher, that's a given, and we'll drop points into Aspiring Presence now and Feverant Fodder later. I'm going to be playing quite cannon fodder heavy, and it's nice if your meat shields don't run away. At level 12, Astrogoth can unlock this lovely little joy, Master of the Conclave. Being quite so angry, expansive, and repugnant, the Chaos Dwarfs get a fairly bad rap abroad. Anything we can do to soften that image will be handy in the long run. With our dashing Bull Centaur hero, we'll prioritize training where possible, and then just make him a right good stabber of living things, I reckon. What a beautiful bull man. What's his name? Zorak. I think not. Welcome to the party, Natalie. I'm so sorry. Whew, almost done with turn one, my word. We'll just recruit some sneaky gobos, another unit of Chaos Dwarf warriors, and some more cannon fodder. I mean laborers. Then it's all aboard the Chaos Dwarf Express to Murderville. Choo choo. <laughs> Dang, green skins are holed up on some prime Thank real estate. You, we'll spread our attackers, as is only correct and proper, to assault on four fronts. I know, full frontal charges with cavalry are frowned upon, but I can take them. Especially with a little help from the laws of a shut and fire. Ho ho ho, lava stomp. You love to see it. As predicted, Astrogoth, Natalie, and their centaur children made light work of their orcish opponents. Elsewhere, we're making slow but steady progress into the din, and I can only imagine the furious indignation of the soon-to-be indentured locals. With one entrance breached, we're free to sow chaotic seas with our cavalry. Mecha Body Slam. Zorna's call is once again united, and Astrogoth's quest to re-establish his dominance within the Tower of Zar can Astrogoth begin in earnest. We'll set the billowing smokestacks commandment to maintain control over our labor and contemplate where to forge ahead next. Remember, we'll be looking for a nice, nearby province to build our factories. The path to the east is tempting, and opens us up to the Mountains of Morn, though the ogres are not a force to be taken lightly. Either way, the Saberskins are less than friendly. 
war will sing in the mountains eventually. Tantalizingly close, the high pass is our most obvious choice, and though these crumbling ruins may appear abandoned, they hum with the scratching machinations of Skaven. Though as not as immediate a threat, the vampires and the orcs of the World Edge Mountain hold no love for us and would stand fast in the face of our expansive ambitions. But not all our neighbours want us dead, and indeed our fellow Chaos Dwarfs also call these lands home. We would be wise to foster a strong relationship with our kind, for in a world that hates our very existence, they are our truest hope for an ally. Meh, you know what, let's just stomp on some rats. Classic ogres, couldn't wait their turn. No matter what direction we started in, we were always going to end up in a situation like this. At least our tower will act as a barrier between the ogres and the rest of our settlements. It's got a strong garrison, so we should be alright for now. If things start looking hairy, we can recruit an emergency lord and hope for the best. Ah, impulsive. That's what I like my leaders to be. Anyway, we've only gone and collected a fair few influence points. Let's say we crack open the Tower of Zara and see what's inside. Okay, alright, I see how it is. Two seats already taken. I guess that's what I get for savouring my rat stomping. Anyway, much like the Chaos Dwarves technology pillars, the Tower of Zara is split into industry, military, and sorcery. There are four tiers, three districts, and a whole lot of boons to gobble down, with the ultimate prize being the confederation of our fellow Chaos Dwarfs. To unlock the next tier, two full districts must be completed in the previous tier. Thanks to my like-minded kin, we're well on our way to achieving those ends. Not gonna lie, I did want the Machinator seat for the bonus to raw materials. We could dethrone them, we have the influence to do so, but we're still trying to play nice at the moment, so probably not the best of ideas. I'm, I'm a little miffed, but we'll park our bum on the blacksmith seat for now. Extra ornaments is nothing to sniff at, and by any means seats aren't permanent. We'll have another shot eventually. Or we'll build an economy so vast every seat is dwarfed beneath our all-encompassing buttocks. Ah, politics. Hmm, unfortunately we're not quite secure enough in our economy to easily swallow the cost of sending a convoy out just yet. Not whilst we're waging two wars, anyway. You know what, the convoy will have to wait back to squashing rats. Despite that, there's something cathartic about watching Skaven run for their lives. Right then, the High Pass is now our industrial district, we're not accepting labour here, instead funneling it all into our mining district which we've now converted into entirely outposts. I've opted not to build a tower in Karag Vlag. I'll use them more on my frontiers to hold our borders firm, much like our capital's been doing with the Ogres, which is good because they're not friendly. Thanks to the Tower of Zar and our Master of the Conclave talent, we're making diplomatic headway with our fellow Chaos Dwarfs. 
and we may need to call in some military favours soon if the Saberskins don't calm down. Anyway, right now we've got greener fish to fry. The World's Edge Mountains is home to the Red Eye Clan. More greenskins! And they're none too thrilled that we kick their vampire friends out of the Silver Pinnacle. They're gonna be less than thrilled when we make them homeless. Positively upset when we put them to the mines. Whilst Astrogoth psychs himself up for more wholesome violence, we'll have our second army begin the recruitment drive for a pair of great Tauruses. Taurusai? All right, let's do this. Gearing up for one big old war. Bring it on, orcs. Oh, okay. There we go then. 20 odd turns in and we've managed to claw ourselves into a somewhat steady footing. The saber skin ogres are still causing us a little grief so we'll likely put them down next, but by adding the world's edge mountains to our growing territories we've opened ourselves up to attacks from Kislevites and our inferior mountain dwelling cousins. Indeed, the journey ahead is perilous and Astrogoth's gonna need a leg up if he- oh. I just mean you could use a hand- I'm sorry. Look, what I'm trying to say is we've got a new epic quest with some stellar rewards up for grabs. The influence alone will set us forward, but the Black Hammer of Hushat is a must for any would-be master of the Conclave. Ah, thank you, Burundin, for keeping our flying cows warm. We'll put them to good use, worry not. Okay, here's the deal. We've got a derail train and a very important payload to deliver. Our task, ensure the payload arrives at the victory point unscathed. Grabby goblins and opportunist orcs will use this narrow valley to their advantage, meaning we must be vigilant. That's right kids, it's an escort quest. We've got a replacement train up and running and I'd wager good money we'll see our first combat on one of these two bridges. Or both. For good measure we'll split our forces into two crack teams with Astrogoth heading one and Natalie the other. Ooh, there they are. We'll set our great Taurus on their archers and take the rest head on. As first waves go, it's immensely survivable. Bit of flanking, bit of magic, bit of vigorous stabbing, and they're running for the hills. As Astrogoth's team continues to the next ramp, on the other side of the valley, Natalie's got a big old spider to squash. I'd rather them than me. It's a tougher crowd than Team A face, but nothing Natalie can't handle. Meanwhile, more greenskins are pouring into the valley and Astrogoth's keen to meet them. Good job, Natalie. We'll take Team B to the next ramp whilst Team A mops up the stragglers. Oh, I think the Great Taurus might be my new favourite unit. Look at it go! So beautiful, so graceful, so moo. Oh right, not too far from our destination now and the payload's yet to be scratched. Whatever comes next weekend, oh the bars are coming in. I should shut up, enjoy the film.